So I'm joined by Ronak Gopaldis. He is the country risk analyst at RMB. Ronak, thanks so much for joining us. Sorry. Zambia, it's been in the headlines for quite a number of reasons. Just uh, give us a sense of the uh, economic plays and the dynamics. What's uh, currently going on there? Well, you just need to look at the financial markets this week to get a sense of what's going on. Uh, the Quattro took an absolute beating, uh, losing 17% of its value in just a day. It's the world's worst performing currency. It's lost 80% of its value this year. So really some, some serious issues on the financial market front. But I think this is a broader um, problem as the country is really experiencing somewhat of a perfect storm. On the external front, the fall in the copper price um, was a significant factor on account of fears about a China hard landing. Uh, there's emerging market risk aversion, which is also feeding into the currency. And domestically, you know, the country is battling, uh, you know, fiscal pressures uh, as well as uh, an election year uh, next year, plus the pro power crisis. So a lot of lot of negative headwinds for for the country to contend with at the mm. moment. In terms of the fiscal pressures, I mean, uh, copper being uh, one of their biggest exports, I think about seventy percent or so. Uh, what is the outlook uh, for Zambia in terms of keeping uh, those uh, fiscal balances in check? Well, it's going to be very difficult, and the budget next week is going to give us a clear indication of what stance the government is actually going to take towards austerity, or will there be slippage? Um, I think the, the sector is under tremendous strain. This week alone, um, last week we saw Glencore's results, which had an impact on copper prices, which are at their lowest levels in six years. In addition to that, with the power constraints, the, the mines can't produce. So you're getting a double whammy, really, on the mining sector from a price and a production uh, perspective. Throw into the mix the regulatory uncertainty that's existed on account of the VAT uh, um, non-payments, as well as the royalty regime. And uh, really, a lot of moving parts over here. Mm -hmm. Already, just, we've just seen this back in terms of those, uh, you know, the, the, the regu regulatory uh, environment in the mining sector. I know you were in Zambia a couple of weeks ago, so you were also able to give us perspective of what it was like on the ground. Mm. So, I mean, the the big sticking point has been uh, that the there was a proposal to increase the royalty taxes for mines on open cast minings, uh, and there was a lot of to and fro between government and the sector. Obviously, with the plunge in commodity prices now, uh, it's been very difficult because the mines are already cash strapped. So uh, ultimately the government backtracked following the election of, of uh, President Lungu in the by-election earlier this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, a number of challenges for the sector in general. Already we've seen job losses in, in, in three mines. Um, and you know really what this comes down to is government revenues as well as job jobs um, which are it's a very difficult balancing act yes. um, for, for both mining sector as well as the the authorities mm. the uh, currency play i mean uh, the uh, zambian quacha has been in the headlines whether or not we're going to see some uh, you know forex exchange intervention coming through this it's been said we won't see anything mm. like that um i don't know what's your sense i mean what's the consensus or what may happen with this currency well the ministry of finance came out today and said that it's a free floating currency they're not going to intervene given the the fact that the the level of import cover and foreign exchange reserves is very thin um, ultimately, all eyes are on the budget next week. The monetary policy alone can't do the heavy lifting. So really, there needs to be strong uh, fiscal consolidation, and that's why we're, we're watching what the, the ministry has to say next week. Mm -hmm. But generally, I think uh, overall, you know, the, the economy is under, under siege. Um, mm -hmm. Consumers are under pressure from the exchange rate, from the inflation front. Power is making it very difficult for businesses to operate in the country as well. Uh, and generally, the, the copper price is, is the single biggest determinant of the country's health. Now, you fast forward a year, there's another election next year, and um, you've got possibly further pressures around fiscal slippage, uh, higher inflation, and, and currency. Um, so the country is in a, a very tight spot at the moment. Mm. Uh, I know that you're the head of the country risk analyst, uh, a country risk, and you're obviously looking or weighing the pros and cons for an investment uh, investment argument for a country like Zambia. Uh, when clients come to you or people want to come to you and ask you, what do you make of Zambia? What do you what do you say to them? What can you say in terms of the investment story here? So I think the, the situation that we're seeing in Zambia is not unique. Uh, commodity producers across the continent are really feeling the brunt, Angola, Nigeria. Uh, Monoline economies are, are under serious pressure. And I think it really makes a very compelling case for diversification and industrialization. Uh, because ultimately, with more diversified uh, economic bases, uh, you'd, you'd be much better insulated to this kind of boom-bust scenario. I think a lot of the, the uh, fundamentals in Zambia over the, the medium to longer term are, are promising. 
agriculture is still completely underdeveloped. Tourism is something that they can tap into. Uh, I think what we'd really like to see is the political will to take the right policy medicine at the moment uh, in order to manage what is, by all accounts, uh, a, a massive crisis for the African continent. Ronak, thanks so much for coming in, Make us, uh, giving us some perspective on Zambia. You said that the tourism sector and agriculture are possibly areas that you can tap into. Thanks so much to Ronak Gopaldus. He's the head of country risk at RMB.